In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your Google Forms and using Google Classroom, quickly auto grade those questions so you can get the data that you need from your students. So stick with me, we are gonna deep dive into that right now. Hey everyone, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and becoming part of the Educated by Design community. If any point in time you find value in this video, please consider giving it a like, and I would really appreciate if you would share it with someone else to bring them value as well. Have any questions? Please ask them in the comments below. And right now, we are going to do a little deep dive into how to create self-graded quizzes using Google Forms in Google Classroom. So let's get going right now. So in Google Classroom, you have the ability to create a series of different components for your classroom, an assignment, quiz assignment, questions, etc. And I have an assignment in front of me, but I also have quiz assignment. And I just said I wanted to show you how to create a quiz. Now, I heard from the probably one of the biggest experts in all things Google, Alice Keeler, to not use the quiz assignment. And I honestly don't know why, but I'm gonna trust her expert opinion. So we're not gonna use that. And I actually figured out why, because it creates a weird way of auto grading that doesn't match the way you do it in regular standalone Google Forms. And so I thought actually at one point that they changed things up and in reality, the easiest way to go about this, not just the easy, the best practice way is create assignments only, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. You create an assignment, you add your title, you add your instructions, you then set up the parameters of the assignment, and then you can create and you can add any type of Google Doc, including a form. Now, I've already created a draft, so I'm just gonna X out of this. I have my famous landmarks around the world quiz, and I have my title, I have my quiz, and now I can create my form. It's going to create a form that you can then go in and you can edit. And in the form, you would set up your questions. So you would set up your form, putting the title, putting the description if you need. I actually have a Google Doc here where I can just literally copy and paste things and I could say famous landmarks right? Famous landmarks around the world quiz. Copy that. And then here we go. So you can add your questions. You have your multiple choice. You have true or false. You can have a drop down menu, checkbox, however you're going to go about it to make the quiz. You just basically have to get your questions in there. You go to your option and you can set up you know, we could have France, we could have England, we could have Turkey, and then we could have Italy. Then you could move into another question. Let's see what's uh, oh, here, a true or false question. I'm not gonna run through all the questions here, but true or false, the Colosseum can be found in when visiting Florence, Italy. So you have your true, and then you have your false and actually auto populates that in different cases. And then you have maybe a short answer. So one of the questions that I actually had over here, um, I'm gonna do first is a checkbox, check all the true facts. Now, one of the things that's a little bit frustrating and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna focus on that when we get to the assessment point is the different ways to assess the data is that it wants, you, it wants to assess what you give it. And so if there's any sort of different, uh, difference, right, between the way that you wrote it out, capital letter, what if, the person, you know, what if the child spells it wrong, grade appropriate, is it about the spelling or is it about knowing the information? So over here, check all that apply. So you have over here, you could set up a short answer and then you can go over here and also add a couple more questions as well. But here is the basis of four questions. Now, you go to the settings gear on the right side. You go to quizzes. You make this assignment a quiz, and then you can have it immediately after each submission be able to be graded. You click on save, and now it has an answer key. So you could actually go in and you can set up the point value. You can then select the 
answer. So you can click on the right answer and you can actually add feedback. And what I like about feedback is that you could set up incorrect answer versus correct. Well, that might be more of a summative assessment. But what about formative assessment? So with formative assessment, you can actually give a deeper level of feedback to actually help the students understand what they're trying to learn and how to get more clarity in the content. So you can do that if you choose. Now, one of the things that is a little bit challenging here with check all that apply. So we'll make this one five points. And if I click on the ones that are true, it is the largest imperial palace. It is not true that it was never home to emperors. It is China's most popular tourist site. Part of the forbidden city is still forbidden and the roof is impossible for birds to land on. Now, if I select three out of the four correct, I can't get partial credit when we auto grade. So you might have to go back in and double check and possibly readjust some of the grading if you want to be able to give partial, question, uh, partial credit or maybe you just understand that some of these questions you just cannot auto grade. And that is a little bit um, of a setback when we're talking about going through the, qui the, uh, the quizzes. Just a, a quick side note, as you hover across your form area, you might notice an interesting pop-up, which is add an image. You could actually add an image by literally going to Google image search and saying forbidden city. And you could actually add a picture into your quizzes, which I just think is kind of nice because you could also add it as a standalone section in the quiz as well, just like a video, but just a side note because I noticed that hover and sometimes we're curious. Now with those fill in the blank answers, okay? So add a correct answer. Now the correct answer is England, but is England also without a cool feature that you know some don't have set up, which is auto capitalize a noun, but you want to just make sure that mark all other answers incorrect except for these, you'll decide what that looks like, but you just want to be aware of these parameters when you're creating that. So that is all done by going to that gear. Now when you create the back in Google Classroom, when you create a quiz assignment, Quiz assignment automatically turns it into a quiz and gives you that feature. And it's just kind of confusing for some people that are trying to make sense of how the apps work between the standalone Google Forms and then the Google Classroom Forms. But that is the rundown. You then have the ability, I always recommend that you actually preview and take your quiz just to make sure that everything is okay. and then you click submit, and then you can view the score, and then you'll realize, if you didn't notice, I actually didn't apply a point value to two of the questions. So just little things like that, it's always helpful to review and double check, and then just to show you what the students get, they get that instant feedback, and then you have those insights. Now, the insights can be sent to a Google spreadsheet for easy, um, review and manipulation of the data. And then you could actually delete all the responses once the quiz is complete in Google Forms. It keeps the data intact in the Google spreadsheet. And then when you're ready to maybe have that quiz happen again, or if you're altering the quiz because it's, um, you know, sort of a mixture of other questions, whatever the context might be, you can select an existing spreadsheet, select that spreadsheet, and then it adds another tab into the sheet. So back to those questions, I can just say, oh yeah, I have to, in the answer key, go over there and of course add some point value to the quiz and then I'll be good to go. So if you found value in this video, please share this video out with another educator or another person that you think could get value from this because that is what is the fuel that drives the creativity that happens on this channel. If you found it valuable as well. Don't forget that subscribe button. Don't forget that like button. Comments below and thank you so much for watching.